In this video, we're going to explore how you can use DAX to dynamically change the titles of your visuals based on your users' interactions. I'm going to show you how you can change the titles using conditional formatting and also how you can deal with multiple selections within your visuals. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when new one is out. So dynamic titles are useful in Power BI to complement the interactivity in your Power BI reports. It gives your users a bit more detail on what the visuals are showing, as they slice and dice your page. So today we're going to use this very simple Power BI report that I created for you today. This report is using the Northwind dataset, which is a fictional company that sells goods internationally. Just to go through quickly the dataset itself, we have a bunch of tables here that just details the different orders that have been made and have been sold by the fictional company. So we have information about the orders, when they were ordered, who they were ordered by, how many were ordered and what products were ordered, the categories of those products, so we can kind of group them if we wanted to, and some details about the customers themselves, so which country they belong to. We also have a calendar table that we have created for time intelligence purposes, and which is what we're using for the access in the bar chart that I've already created here in this page. Now, this bar chart is simply showing us the total sales for each of those months across the lifetime of the company itself. The one last thing that I've created here is a total sales measure, which is simply a measure that calculates the total sales by multiplying the unit price against the quantity. So if we make some space here for a slicer and let's say we want to add a slicer for a different category at the top here, and usually I, I make it as a drop down just so that we have more space to work with. So at the moment, what it's giving us is the total sales by month across the lifetime of our company. However, if we select, let's say beverages here in our category name, now it just gives us the total sales for the beverages products across the lifetime of the company. Now, this is really handy obviously, because you are able to kind of analyze each product category and how they performed over time. However, just looking at this and let's say just getting the visual itself without seeing the slicer, you won't have any idea what the context is of this visual. And let's say as a developer, you might want to add that additional context on the visual itself to signify what filters have been selected. So in this case, for example, what we would want is to see the title change to total sales by beverages, because that's what we've selected here. And if we select something else, like for example, confections, that should also change to total sales by confection. And we can do this pretty simply by using DAX. So let's start by creating a new measure right here. And let's start by naming it. So we'll name this one visual title. And first we will try to use selected value from our category name. So this will return to us what we have selected from uh, our, our, our column or from our field, whatever it is. So let's just use that for now and hook it up to our title here in the visual. So under format your visual, you'll need to go to general and under titles, Instead of typing the text here, we'll click the conditional formatting FX icon here. We'll base it on a field value, which will be the value that uh, the measure that we have just created, visual title. So you'll see that now it reflects what we have selected in our dropdown. So dairy products will give us dairy products here. So pretty easy, right? We just need to modify this slightly to say total sales. of like this and then add the ampersand to make sure that we have total sales of 
whatever the category is selected. So pretty easy. So like many things that are dynamic, you have to account for different scenarios in which your users can interact with in your page. So in this case, a very easy thing to have is to, when you clear your uh, selections, you will see that the value disappears. And that's because the selected value it won't return anything because you're essentially returning multiple values, which in this context, although it's saying that you haven't got anything selected at the back, it's actually showing you everything. So you have to account for this in your DAX code. So in this case, if nothing is selected, we want to just say total sales. And if there is something selected, we want to say total sales of, let's say condiments or beverages. So let's go back to our visual title here and let's modify this slightly. Let's create a variable. Uh, let's say uh, this one would be category. And then we will just say, we'll create an if statement here. It's, this is one is to check if nothing is selected. So if selected value, if I can spell, category if it's not blank so essentially add the add the suffix that we want to add so we want to say of and then whatever the selected value is category name like this. So now we have created a variable. We'll just simply return that. And now we will use that as a concatenation. So we will say total sales and category. So what it will do is first it will check if it's not blank, if something is selected and only if something is selected, it will add the off plus the category that you have selected. If you've not selected anything, it will return nothing, in which case it will just give us total sales, which is exactly what's happening here. So if we select condiments, you'll see total sales of condiments. If you select their products, but if you select nothing, it will just give us total sales, which is how you would handle something like this. So as you can see with DAX, as long as you know what the syntax is of what you're writing, it's pretty much fully customizable. In most scenarios, for example, you will have more than one slicer. In this case, you might want to add more values in your dynamic title to signify what's been selected in those different filters. So let's say, and let's add another uh, slicer here, but instead of categories, we want to add the customer country. So when they select a different country, we also want to reflect that on the DAX title in our visual. So instead of just showing category, it will also show the country in which it's being filtered in. So we can just add that simply in the title itself. So let's go back to our visual title here. Well, let's, let's deselect everything here and let's go back to our visual title DAX. To make our life easier, I'm just gonna simply copy the variable here because it's exactly what we're going to do anyway. It's just going to be for a different column. So we're gonna say country. Like this, and we want to say in instead of off, which is fine. And then for our return, we'll just simply add the country variable that we've just created and there we go so it doesn't look like there's anything there but what's great about this is that let's say if we want to select condiments and country you'll see that it will add all of those filters that we've selected in our title if we didn't have any categories for example it will just give country and vice versa if we just had category it will just have uh, the category itself and if you have nothing, it will still 
only just give total sales, which is exactly what we wanted. So now that you know how you can handle multiple slicers and concatenate them into a visual title, let's take this to the next level. Let's say we will have scenarios in which your users can select multiple values in your slicers. And what I mean is in one slicer. So for example, at the moment we account for when a category is selected, when none is selected, but what this doesn't show you is how it would handle if you've selected multiple values in your category. So if you select beverages and condiments, you'll see that although you have selected multiple values in category, you have selected something, it will still show nothing. And that's because if you remember, the selected value function only returns if there is one value that is selected, if there's multiple categories, for example, in this case, it will just return blank, which is why we don't have uh, the concatenation here in our title. So how would we deal with that? So the first thing that you, bear, you need to bear in mind is that you need to think about the fact that there can be multiple categories that they can select. So you can select one, two, three, four, up to how many categories there are here. And while it's useful to show the context to the title. You don't want your title to be too clogged up or, or too long. And you just wanna be able to say that there are multiple items selected within the category. So in this very simple example, I'm going to show you how you can create uh, and add an etc. if multiple categories are selected in your slicers. So what we're going to do, uh, and I'm just going to just to keep things simple, I'm going to create a new measure. Let's not touch the visual title right now. And we're just going to say, uh, just going to name this one multiple values. So the first few things that I'm going to set up is the variables that I want to uh, check. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to count how many values are selected in uh, in my slicer. So in this case, we have variables selected, and we're going to use distinct count here, category name. And then next, I'm going to check how many there are categories in total. So uh, that's because when you select nothing, it will actually count everything. So we want to account for how many categories there are if nothing is selected. And you'll see why I'm doing this in a bit. So I'm going to use calculate here, distinct count, category name, and we'll use the all function to remove all filters. So now I'm going to use selected as a return value for my measure. I'll put it in a card and I'll show you what the actual result of that is. So it gives us two. And it gives us two because that's what we have selected as number of categories here in our category slicer. So we have selected nothing, you see. It still gives us eight. So we need to account for this um, if there are no values selected. If you select multiple, three, four, five, it gives you how many values are selected in our category. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our multiple values here. And in the return, we'll just create another if statement here to say, um, if selected is not all, because this scenario would be if nothing is selected, we don't want to account for that. Um, and we want to say if selected is greater than one. So this is if we have multiple values selected in our actual category, we want to get the, well, we're just going to get one of the categories that have been selected. And then we're going to concatenate it with an etc. If not, we're just going to get whatever category is selected. So just to recap and don't get confused, all it does is if it, it checks two things. If you have selected something, 
these two are basically just checking if something, if more than one value is selected within the category field. What it will do is it will get one value and add an etc at the end. Otherwise, it will just give us the category name of what's been selected. So from here, what you can see now is if we select a category, you will see the category that you have selected at the bottom here, which is our multiple values. If you select multiple values in your slicer, if you hold control select, you will see that it will give us an etc at the end, which is what we want to add in our visual title. So for example, add something else, grains. When it has multiple values, it will add an etc at the end, but it will only just show you one of the categories within your visual, which is uh, pretty handy. The only thing that I didn't account for is for when nothing is selected, which is like this. Uh, there is a value here, which we actually want to just use selected value. So we want to show nothing if nothing is selected. So category like this. There we go. So if nothing is selected, perfect. So the last thing that we want to do here is just finally update the code that we have in our uh, visual title to account for, um, for this value. So uh, I've gone ahead and cleaned up the DAX code, but essentially what it does is it incorporates all of the uh, calculations that we have created in multiple values combined with the visual title itself. So now you will see if you go back to our visual, if you select one, you will see total sales of condiments. If you select multiple values, it gives you etc. And it still doesn't lose that ability to add other values from different slicers, which is pretty handy. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to use DAX to create dynamic titles for your visuals in Power BI. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you on the next one. Bye-bye.